glad to have Pat and Shirley back. Um, they're, they're here in their northern home for until uh, it starts getting real cold. And Shirley will be thinking about Florida again, which is good. I'm, I'm really glad they could do that. That's, that's awesome. That is awesome. John chapter, or the Gospel of John chapter 1. We've been talking about identifying with Christ. Abby uh, just said, we will tell you what page we're singing, because I told her last night, I remembered that a lot of times they're singing something. Some of us are still looking for the page. I said it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix that. I'm going to let you sing partway into the first verse, and I'm going to say real loud, Hey, what page are you on? <laughs> but she said, Brother Dusty, she said, sometimes she has to ask Brother Dusty what song will be easier because they'll have a list of songs, and then sometimes she said, Dusty switches them up on me. I don't know where we are here. But um, you know, the saying all of that, you know what's really important is what we felt here today in worship. The Spirit of God touching our hearts. That's that's the most important thing. Alright. The Gospel of John, chapter number number one. The Gospel of John, chapter number one. Verse number. Verse number 14 is where we've been reading from. Speaking of Christ, speaking of Jesus, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, some people have an affinity, like I, I don't like, or they hear the name of Jesus and they're like, oh, wait a minute. Realize it's because people have misrepresented Christ. Christ is full of grace and truth. And so someone, if someone has done things and they said, Follow Jesus, or word of Jesus, but they're, they're not full of grace or truth. They're not full of, they're, they're not following Christ themselves. Okay, we have to we have to be careful because it's just like it's just like prejudice. If uh, a white man steals my car, that doesn't mean every white man in the world is a uh, car thief. Or if a uh, 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 black man beats up my uncle. Um, that doesn't mean every black man in the world. I mean, that person, he may happen to be black, but that person is a bad person. Does that make sense? It has nothing to do with the, with the different tone of ground that we are. Okay? So, so it, 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 it has to do with individual. But it says of Jesus Christ that he was full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, this was he of whom I said, now notice, notice John bore witness of Christ, and what did he do? He cried out. He, he was open. You know when you know, when you know someone real important, that you have a lot of respect for, you're not a, you're not ashamed. You're not you're not a, you're not ashamed of them. You 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 you're willing and open about them, and we're we're getting into that today as we identify with Christ. He cried out, "This is He of whom I said, He comes after me. He who comes after me is preferred before me, for He was before me." Now that takes a moment to explain, but just if you if you want an explanation of that, ask me later. I need to kind of kind of go on here. And of his fullness, 
we have all received and grace for grace. Some versions say grace on top of grace. God gives us a, 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 a bucket, so to speak, of grace. And on top of that bucket is another bucket of grace. And what is grace? Some people confuse grace and mercy. Mercy is God not giving you what you deserve. Meaning, we have all sinned, we deserve judgment, we deserve hell, but in God's mercy, He spares us. Amen? God has spared my life many times. I'm very thankful, very thankful. I, des I deserve hell. Mercy is God giving us, uh, God not giving us what we deserve. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. <laughs> we, the, the love and the forgiveness and the joy and the, the, the abundant life that God gives, that's God's grace and that is found in Jesus Christ. Of his fullness we have all received in grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your the reading of your word. I ask you to, to move this day. Bless those here that are listening, dear God, and those who will listen later online, dear God. We ask you that you just open up your word to us and we open up our hearts to you. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, we've been, we've been talking about identifying with Christ. I'm looking forward to next, next Sunday already, identifying with Christ. Van was trying to be here on Easter, but uh, he purposely overloaded himself through the winter months. And so he's, I think he does like four online teaching classes and groups that he does plus his regular church work that he does and so uh, I'm preaching on Sunday so he's he's real busy he may not make it but he wants to make it he'll, he'll be coming soon but he's just not sure when but we've been we've been teaching about identifying with Christ the world is really Humanity is, really has an identity crisis. People, they're, they're looking for something to be part of. That's an, I identify with that. I talked about people wearing a Michael Jordan jersey, okay, this, or, or uh, uh, Air Jordan tennis shoes, okay. It doesn't make you Michael Jordan, but, you know, they're just, some psychological something. I identify with that. Okay? And I'm not putting that down. But if, if that's, if you're trying to do that for your source of joy, that's where the problem comes in. That's my advisor tells me to speak into this so it records better. So, <laughs> all right. Got to remember that. But it, it's not wrong to, okay, I, you know, I ride horses, I identify as a rancher or a cowboy or, or whatever I identify with. That, that's, that's not wrong in a sense, but when we're, we're trying to identify with something to fulfill the longing in our soul, that's when it becomes wrong because inside of each of us is a God-shaped cavity and we will never be happy until God fills that with himself. We, we, we are incomplete until we, we really give our heart to the Lord. And that's, the Bible actually says we are complete in him. Okay? A lot of people think that getting, getting married, uh, that's going to fulfill me. Some people marry think if they get single again, that will fulfill them. It's, it's. The, the things of this life are not going to satisfy us. It's the, 
the, the God of heaven coming to live inside of our soul. So, identifying, the, the world is in an identity crisis. It, it tries to identify with new fads. I mean, you just look at the way people wear their hair. I'm not putting anyone down, but some shave all this side off, and just grow it out this side, some shave it all off. Uh, even when they have some, they shave it all off. Some let it grow as long as can be. Some painted uh, fluorescent orange, red, blue, purple. You know, we see all these things. You see some people, they have one ear ring, two ear ring, three ear ring. Some people, I mean, there's no, no place left on their body to poke a hole in to put a, put a ring in. And, and people are trying to find fulfillment. I'm not putting anyone down. I tried to find fulfillment in, in, in uh, things that didn't satisfy. So I'm not, I'm not putting anyone down. I'm just saying things external are not going to make us happy. If what makes us happy is Jesus on the inside. He, he wants to live inside of us. Now, we, we got into um, Titus, the book of Titus, we're talking about identifying with Christ in his grace. And he's full of grace. He's full of grace and truth. Okay? In Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 13, the Bible says, For the grace of God has been, re has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. This is how God deals with people. All people, people of people. In, in the Old Testament, he dealt with Israel only because he chose to bring the Messiah through the, the, the Hebrews, through the Jewish, Jewish race. But anyone could come to God and honor God and worship God with their heart and mind. The grace of God here, Titus says, has appeared it brings salvation to all people. I'm glad, because what if God decided to exclude a certain group of people? It might be the group of people that I belong to. So thank God that God brought salvation to everyone, all of us. Don't ever feel like God is excluding you. I like Abby story she or her testimony, she she shared that you know she she didn't have a suicidal plan or anything like that, but she did she did you know pray like God, it, it would be good to just go to sleep and not have to wake up and deal with this. Just you know let me just be done with everything. Well, I'm glad she woke up. I'm glad she's here. Okay, and I'm glad she found that God, and I, I know her story very, very um, personally, very deeply, and so I know that there was a period of her time that she thought that she could not be saved. She thought that God could not save her, or that God was done with her, or that she was a person that grace could not reach. Never, never think that way. If you think that way, it's a lie. God's grace can reach you. God, God's not done with you. God loves you. You have a purpose. You are important to God. Okay? So the grace that brings salvation to all men. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and uh, sinful pleasures. Okay? When grace comes to us, I read that from the New Living Translation. Um, the uh, New King James says that grace teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. And so when we identify with God's grace, we're identifying with that which leads us in the right path. Grace, the grace of God is a teacher. And I like, I use the illustration about um, years ago, it's not much of a fad anymore, but those little yellow signs, they, they 
would say something on board, baby on board, whatever. Um, mean wife on board, you know, they, they, they came up with, they said all kinds of stuff, okay? And uh, they even had some that said Jesus on board. But what, what I like to say about, uh, about that is when the grace of God comes in, we have the teacher on board. The teacher, the teacher is inside of those who believe, who have put their faith in Christ. <coughs> the teacher is inside. So it's not like I come upon a situation and I have to look and see on page 467, verse number, that this, this is the answer here. No, the teacher is, is on board. When, when I ask Christ to come and live in my life, to change my heart, and now I identify with Christ. I, 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 I've, come, I've come into him and he's come into me. I've also used the illustration about the, the Hall Creek flows into the Columbia. Well, Hall Creek loses its identity. Once it flows into the Columbia River, it becomes part of the river. Uh, people a hundred miles down the river have probably never heard of Hall Creek. They don't, they don't look at uh, the, the big Columbia flowing by and they think, oh, yeah, there's the Kettle Falls River, there's the Conga River, there's Barnaby Creek, Hall Creek. And they, no, that's the Columbia River. When we come to Christ, it's not so much where we came from, it's where we are now. We identify with Christ. We become part of Christ. And Christ is part of us. Now, this Christ is full of grace, so when Christ comes into me, what am I full of? <laughs> I'm, whatever, if you got the other answers, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> full of grace, right? Okay, let me put it another way. If Christ comes into you, what are you full of? There, that's safer. <laughs> you never know. You never know what people say. So, Christ has come into you. Christ is full of grace. So what are you full of? You're full of grace. But you know, a lot of times you don't feel that way. You feel that you're full of doubt. You feel you're, you're full of uh, rejection. Nobody likes me. You have to be careful what you listen to. Okay? Um, you know, they... they um, a lot of times when people say they have voices in their head or they, you know, hear voices or whatever... Uh, Modern society just wants to give you some type of drug to calm you down, okay? But we have to realize, I'm not being kooky, but we have to realize that God can talk to us and the enemy can talk to us. And I've not heard Satan like an audible voice, but I've had thoughts come and I'm like, wait a minute, that thought is not from God. That thought is not from the Lord Jesus because Jesus is full of grace and truth, okay? He's come into us. We are full of Christ. We are full of grace when we put our faith in Him and ask Him to forgive our sins, come into our life. So now we're full of grace, okay? This grace on board, it teaches us. What does it teach us? It says, denying ungodliness. Denying, um, I looked it up in the Greek dictionary. I wanted to make sure that it was giving me the, the proper uh, definition. It means to disown something. To renounce a thing, to forsake it, not to accept, to reject, to refuse. So the grace of God in us teaches us to deny or reject, not people now. A lot of times, listen, if you have hurt and, and uh, bitter, bitter things that have happened to you, I, I can tell you part of getting over it 
is stop putting a face, and I know it's people that do us wrong, but let me tell you this, every wrong that has been done in the world has somehow been influenced by Satan. When people murder and plunder and destroy and steal and harm, that's not God. That's not how God operates. Yes, people do it, and they may have said they were God. Like I said, there's, there's, there's instances where it, 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 in history where it says that Hitler claimed he was doing God's will. Hitler was not doing God's will. He was a devil. <laughs> okay? Evil that has gone on in the world, I, I know people do us wrong, but put a spirit on it, and it'll help you get over it. That was the devil. Yes, that was, you know, my neighbor next door. But the devil was influencing her or influencing him. Okay? And so, when, when the grace of God comes into us, it teaches us to deny, not to hate the people. Now, I'm not saying someone, you know, really did you wrong, harmed you physically, mentally, sexually, or, or you know, stole from you or whatever. I'm not saying you have to welcome them back in to, oh, you know, just, uh, you, you want to forgive them. That doesn't mean you just give them the keys to the house again, okay? You have to be careful that way. But, the Bible teaches us to renounce the ungodliness, denying ungodliness. Ungodliness can come, it just, it comes through our senses, it comes through our, our hearing, our seeing, our smelling, our tasting, our touching, the five senses that God has given humanity to deal with life, okay? Evil, good can come that way, but evil can come that way. And the grace of God teaches us what to accept and what to reject. We, we, we have to be careful. A lot of people, a lot of people, they don't understand, they don't understand the whole, and this is what God does when, when the grace of God is inside of you. God teaches you. It's like if, if I travel way over here and right here, I grievously sinned against God. A lot of people just think of this spot. That was, it happened wherever I want to say it, you know, at a, at a nightclub in San Antonio, Texas, okay. Yes, something happened there, but a lot of people they don't see that there was a road I walked to get there. And that's what the grace of God, because when, when we are pulled to do something evil, the, the grace of God will, will say, hey, don't, don't walk that road. And that's how you, wow, I, I feel, I feel, um, I feel like I just shouldn't go there. I shouldn't do that. You may not have a scripture at the time to back up what's going on, but the onboard teacher is just saying, hey, <laughs> take a detour. Don't go that way. That's the grace of, that's the grace of God. I can't, now, I cannot deny what is not available to me. So when the Bible tells me to deny ungodliness, God is saying, ungodliness is available. It's around, it's out there. God is, God is letting us know, it's out there, it's available, but the grace of God will teach you to deny. It'll teach you, no, I'm not walking there. A lot of people do so much damage, so much damage, we don't realize what happens sometimes to to innocent children, but mom and dad chose a total wrong path. And it, and it affects, and, and a lot of times that, that wrong path, it ends up on the children. And this is what I've learned. I, I, I've told parents this 
you know, I've been preaching for a few days. Since 1987, I was, a, was my first pastor in Southern California. And our children can forgive our past if our present is correct. Children grow up and they understand because they grow up and they start making sins and mistakes and they do things wrong themselves. They can understand, whoa, dad, mom was a, was a bad lady, okay? They can understand, but wow, mom has really changed. Mom, mom, is, mom, is, 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 mom is not doing that anymore. Mom is different. Mom used to, I, I, I know one lady that whenever my wife and I help, I'll keep it vague, whatever, but um, as a the lady now, after years, has a really good relationship with her mom, and her mom was a severe disciplinarian. <laughs> like, slap your teeth out of your mouth, disciplinarian. <laughs> okay? And that's hard on a child. That's, that's some parents correct their children because the children embarrass them. Correction should involve love, and, and correction is not just beating or, or punishment. Correction is, hey, don't walk this that way, walk this way. I mean, glad like God corrects us like that. I mean, God could just zap us with lightning bolts. You done me, you messed up. It's all done. Okay. How many of us would be here? I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't, because God's had to correct me. Thank God he corrects us in love. But let's, let's, let's come back to the message so I can end up here. Denying ungodliness to disown. You know I don't do that. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean, um, okay, I, I mentioned a nightclub. Going, I've been to nightclubs and and whatever, and there's a lot that happens there, and not much of it is any good. Okay? I'm not putting down any of my old friends that still do that, but I just don't do that. I just, God has come into my heart and just let me know, you know what? I don't do that anymore. The things I used to do, there's a song that says, the things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. And I'm not grieve you by singing for you, but <laughs> denying something is an act of your will. And that's what God's after. God is after that, that inner part of you that makes those decisions. And God, God is not after it so he can make you a robot and you just Okay, you just just uh, kind of lifelessly follow God. God's not after that, but that part of you that makes your decisions, that part of you that says, "I will do this," or "I will do will not do this." God wants to get that part of you to where. You accept the good and deny the evil. Jesus used his will to serve the Father. He said in John 3, 38, or John 6, 38, he said, For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. I came here. I came to do his will. In Gethsemane, when Jesus knew that he was going to be, he was going to go through um, several, he actually went through about six mock judgments. If you put them all together, there's like six times he went back and forth to Pilate and Herod and the people and the priests and all of this stuff. He knew he was going to go through all this and be whipped and be beaten and be mocked and be stripped and be crucified. And he prayed, he said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup, this suffering, let it pass from me. But he didn't stop there. He said, but not as I will. 
but it's thou not. God, he was saying, Father, I, I, in my flesh, I don't want to go through this, but I want your will. I want not my will, I want to do it your way. And he surrendered to the will of the Father. He said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, he said of us, or to us, he said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We are to identify with Christ in denying evil. Could you imagine if everyone, it's like, um, you know, there's, you hear, you hear a lot about people stealing stuff. Could you imagine if everyone just was, you know what, I see my neighbor, they have some stuff outside, but uh, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna sneak up there, the back of their house in the dark of night and take their stuff or take their car. Some, someone put on Facebook and their car was stolen. <laughs> just the other day, just right around here. They got it back, I guess, after they put it out and told everyone who did it. And <laughs> they, got it they got it back. But could you imagine if everyone was, whenever that evil impulse came, what a world this would be. <laughs> now I feel like punching that person, but that evil impulse, they just said, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. Okay, just, just how much? What about in marriages when, when things are just turned upside down? And uh, um, the, the feeling, the feeling of, of, of the, the marriage, the good feeling, the excitement of the marriage is, is over. And, and now it's just, ah, whatever. And, and people just stop and say, God, not my will, but thine be done. We are to identify with Christ. We are to identify with Christ. And while we're doing, while we're denying this, we're identifying with Christ in shining the light to a lost in a dying world. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, or instead of Jesus, I'll give you a few scriptures. First, or, or in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Speaking of Christ, it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So that Jesus, in him was light, and that light was the light of men. And the darkness that, the darkness did not comprehend it, or the darkness, actually what that means, the darkness could not overpower it. Christ was the light of the world. He came, and the darkness, the darkness had to dissipate. Do you know, in a sense, there's, there's really not a big, Conflict between light and darkness because once you turn the lights on, darkness is gone. <laughs> when, when you come into a darker and darker room and you hit the switch as long as the liquor is working, okay, you don't hear a big fight between light and darkness. Darkness is there, but once you turn the light on, darkness is gone. That's the way it is when Jesus comes into us. The light is in there. Jesus came and he shined the light and a lot of people have misconstrued what he said and what he done and what he did. But I, I know he's real because you know what? My old sin darkened heart when Jesus came in, now there's light in there. I just, I just love the Lord. God's been so good to me, okay? And I've, I've been threatened, my life has been threatened. Uh, oh. I've, I've been, through, been through a lot of things, but you know there's no one in the world I hate. Now that's, that's a good feeling. That now there's some people I will trust in you. Okay. But there's no one I hate. There's not one person in the world that I wish would die and burn in hell. 
not one. Not one. Why? Because that the light of God has come into my soul. And he changed that old heart of I'll get revenge on you. I'll get revenge on you. No. The light of God has come in. Now that's hard because when you really forgive people, you feel like you're giving them a pass. But you know what? The Bible says God is a judge. He will, he will judge. And people now, they call it karma. Oh, karma happened. And the karma doesn't happen. Okay? Uh, the Bible says, what you sow, that shall you also reap. If you sow evil, you know what's going to grow? Good things. No. Evil. If you sow hatred, what are you going to, what are you, what's going to grow? Hatred. You know if you sow love, and good things, you know what's going to grow? Good things, love, okay? We are to identify with Christ in his amazing grace. We are to identify with Christ in shining the light, okay? Now, so, Jesus said, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. That's John 9 and 5. In John 12 and 46, he said, I have come as a light into the world, that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. So when we put our faith in Christ, we're not in darkness anymore. I, the, you know, the hatred and being unforgiven, I like the definition that someone said, hating and holding a grudge, you know, like, I, I want them to, I, I want them to, you know, be punished for it. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't turn someone in, okay? There, there are civil, God has instituted civil, if someone's stealing, uh, I'll turn them in, I'll call the cops, I'll give them license plate numbers, I'll do this. I don't hate them, but you know what, they may, they may steal from you. And you know what, I may be saving their life, because they may come to your house, and you may have a tour gate by your bedside. And they come breaking into your house, that may be the last house. They come to my house and find a tour gauge by the bedside. So they're not breaking my house either. But you know, I can forgive. I can I can I can forgive and still believe in, in so, social justice. But this is the deal. To hate and despise, it's like someone defined it as it's like you're drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. It doesn't work that way because that anger, that bitterness, it eats at you and it robs your joy. It steals your, your, your love. It steals your just, just, God wants us to enjoy life, okay? So God wants us to share in the light. He told the disciples that believed in him and were following him in Matthew 5 and 14. He said, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. I don't know if you, you know, the world was full of darkness, but I, I don't know. I know modern doors, they happen to where you use different, different, uh, different things like you can seal off, seal off the light. Okay? But if you think of an old, old door, and you're in the darkness, and behind that old, old door, it's a bright light. There's light coming through cracks, coming through the sides. It's, it's, it's like that light is bursting out. I know we may be imperfect. We're the old cracked door. We're imperfect and everything. But the light of God is in us, and it does come out. It, it, it shows. It, it shows the world. Yet we're not perfect. We have up days and down days. But you know what? The world should see the light of Christ in us because we identify with Christ. Amen? We, we identify. When, when you come to someone who put their faith in Christ, you should find joy. You shouldn't find bitter and anger and revenge. And, and if, if you have that in your heart, you know, God can, God can set that free. And I, listen, I know people do as well. There are people that do not deny 
ungodliness, but they follow the godliness. There are, there are people that have done evil. There are people that have just done evil. Okay? Think of the war in Ukraine right now. Just evil. Evil. And there are, there are people like that. But you know, don't let your life become wrapped up in unforgiveness and hatred and bitterness. Let your life identify with Christ. That evil, that evil, it's, if you think of Hall Creek again, maybe way upstream something bad happened, but you know it's flowed, and it's flowed, and it's flowed, and now it's in the Columbia River. And it's, 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 it's lost its identity. I have that, that bitter, angry, hateful, revengeful, angry teenager that would get mad and punch doors and do other crazy things and evil things. And you know what? He's gone. <laughs> He's gone. He lost his identity. He came to Christ. And in Christ, he found the joy, the joy and the love and the peace that can only be found in Jesus Christ. And when I, or you, or anyone comes to Jesus, comes into Christ, and he comes into us, you know what? It doesn't mean I forget that I'm a Bradeen and I have family, and it's not like that. But as far as that sinful nature, I have overcome it. It's been overcome. It tries to come back and reclaim authority, but but the grace of God teaches me. Ah uh, ah uh, ah! Uh. <laughs> Leave your anger and bitterness at the door. <laughs> if you're coming in here, you gotta. There's things you gotta leave at the door because I have been to you. If you've accepted Christ into your life, you have been changed. The amazing grace of God, identifying with this grace. When Christ is in us, that light, that light is inside. And it may be, uh, may be tempted from my humanity and my imperfection. If you're looking, if you're looking for fault, just you know, go ahead. You know, I'm sure you can find it. I kind of got it hanging all over the place somewhere. Um, I'm, I'm human, but Christ has come in. The grace has come in. The light has come in. And so, what controls me now is not that old sinful nature. It tries to, but the grace of God now teaches me how to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and teaches me, it says, to live sober and to live godly. When I get to heaven, no, it says, in this present world. Amen. I'm not going to let you or anyone else rain on my parade. <laughs> I'm going to believe God. And if, it, if, it, if God sends the rain, then, then he'll protect me in the rain. I'm, I'm not going to let someone else's bitterness and anger and, 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 and resentment and hatred and, like I said, I, I've, I've, I've had people uh, that uh, I believe they would even hire people to kill me, that, that said they would kill me. I, I've faced that, and Abby will testify. She, she knows that, that because I, I chose to serve Christ, but you know what? Jesus Christ is living on the inside, and there's been an awesome change, and I just want to share it with anyone who is looking for the answers of life. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for your love and your mercy. Thank you for everyone here. God, right now, we just 
ask you to help us, to guide us, to work in our heart and work in our life. And Father, whether it's someone here or someone who will listen later, if they're not surrendered to the Lordship of Christ, Lord, I ask you to work in their heart, work in their soul. God, I thank you. I, I know me. I was very, very proud, refused to change. I believed everybody else was dumb and stupid and ignorant, and, and everybody in the world needed to change but me. But God, I'm thankful that when your grace began to work on my life, you helped me to humble my heart, humble my mind, humble my soul, and reach out and say, God, help me. God, come into me. God, just, just help me. I, I want to live for you. Lord, I pray that happens to whoever, and it will happen, to whosoever will call on the name of Jesus. God, we love you and we thank you for this day. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. And uh, remember, um, I don't have the date right on my, I think it's the 15th. Is that Good Friday, the 15th? We're having a, uh, the Stages of the Cross right here. Looking forward to that on Friday at 6 p.m. And we'll have some food and refreshments and fellowship. And it'll be a good time to just bring the family, invite someone. We're looking to have a good time with the Lord. God bless you. Amen.